Someone asked me why would I hack this if this works? Well, why wouldn't you? Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. What I've got in here, it's a Kogik smart plug and you might have, well, you might be asking why am I going to hack this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, this is not a bad plug in terms of a design. I really like the shape of it, the size of it. I don't like the app and that's one of the reasons. The other reason being, uh, I'm an old Red fan, so, you know, everything that's uh, connected to Node Red is my favorite device. Now, previously, I have hacked a smart plug like this uh, from Oitim, and uh, just look at the size. I can pretty much fit this anywhere, even underneath the table, which uh, with this plug, it is not possible due to that oversized uh, socket that is not compatible with a lot of different places. Now, uh, what's interesting about two designs, I already know that they share the same ESP86 um, 8266S1 chip. So if you're interested in hacking this plug, I'm gonna link it here. If you're interested in review uh, of this smart plug as well, I'm gonna link it for you. It works with Alexa and it works with uh, Google Home. Now it's gonna work with Noldred. So uh, yeah, this baby is actually just hacked so we can go to a showcase. So I've got a small showcase for you. Uh, the device obviously it's turned on and it's working. I have my dashboard from Node-RED in here and I can toggle it from the dashboard. Almost instant response, which is awesome. Uh, another integration is the button or uh, Alexa. Turn the main lights on. Okay. Works perfectly. And obviously the existing button is also mapped. Brilliant. So, uh, showcase is pretty much done. Uh, all it's left is uh, to show how it's done. So uh, let's uh, dive into it. Getting inside of the Kogik Smart Plug has proven to be a little bit more difficult than usual. And the enclosure is sealed. So it's probably glued together or heated up together so it wouldn't open. Uh, but with a couple of tools and uh, you know uh, a bit of patience I was able to get that open. There's a button inside and the board itself has a ESP8266 chip with uh, some kind of cover on it which I'm gonna remove in a second. Now I also need to desolder these uh, prongs there in order to kind of have access to my ESP so let's do that first. To make the job easier, I used a soldering iron, uh, the solder wick and some solder socking device to remove the excess solder and after a couple of minutes of prying, I was able to separate the main board from the socket board. And here how the ESP looks like underneath the cover. Because the ESP itself is embedded into another uh, breakout uh, board, I thought I could just use existing parts to solder some wires. However, I was not able to find GPO00 uh, in order to flush and uh, custom software. So soon I realized I actually have to expose all the original pins, which I did by desoldering the entire board. It took me a couple of minutes to actually wiggle it ar around and pop it out. But once the module has been released, I was able to access all the pins. As you can see in here, this is the pins I'm needed to expose in order to make a flush and the GPIO0, it's not actually ported to the breakout board. It's the third pin in here and it's not linked with any of the exposed pins. A couple of minutes later, I was able to add some wires to the ESP device and connect it to my serial programmer. From now on, it's pretty much straight up following my son of tutorial. First, I'll strongly recommend you to uh, make a backup uh, because if for some reason you want to revert uh, to the original software uh, obviously this is what is uh, how you're gonna restore your firmware so uh, make a backup first and here's the link for you to follow 
Once you do that, uh, just download the AFP firmware from this website. Uh, make sure you're downloading ESP8266 version and you'll be able to flash it onto your board. I've linked the entire procedure in the article, so please open that in the description in order to find out how to connect the device and how to make a backup, how to uh, erase flash and how to obviously load the new AFE firmware. Bear in mind, each time you want to do something like this, your GPIO 00 has to be pulled down to ground and then reset the board using the reset pin. It was time to flash the AFE software. It only took a couple of moments and I was able to verify that the chip is indeed flashed because I was able to see the AP point available on my mobile phone. It was time to put everything back together, so I've added the board to the main board again, soldered all the connections, then I took the entire PCB and uh, soldered it with the socket. Lastly, I've added a bit of a glue to make the entire case stick together for safety. I've loaded the AFE software, went to the configuration page and added the network information. Uh, then I've enabled a couple of other things. Uh, let's start with MQTT, just add your server information so you could speak to the device uh, via MQTT protocol. I've set the custom name to Kogi, you can make a note of this as well. Now LEDs under uh, GPIO4, I took a couple of uh, times to actually find which LED it was. The relay, it's under GPIO15 and I've named it Switch1. Also make note of the name of the Switch1. And lastly, the button itself, it's under GPIO 13 and it's set to assistive button. Once you've completed everything, I just make sure in a device, uh, you may pass the name of the device, but enable uh, MQTT and uh, the HTTP APIs. And that's the configuration for this board. We have the board available on my network, so let's take a look at Node-RED. So this is a basic setup for protocol MQTT. It is this uh, topic, uh, Kogik then switch one and command, and you're passing on, off or toggle to control this socket. Now the same protocol MQTT can be used to receive the updates, and I'm using that from the uh, status. So it's the same topic with a different uh, end, and I'm just assigning the value, which is uh, uh, status of the um, smart block as a payload to be able to display it on my dashboard. And as, like you, as you can see, this is a dashboard which I can uh, control it from. Everything works great, so I can explain a bit more about all the things I did. So once the dashboard and notification has been deployed, I've just used on and off states to assign custom values and then pass uh, that information as a HTTP request uh, which is sent to my Kogi device. Now, Alexa integration is done in the same style, so you can uh, kind of look at my tutorial for Alexa and um, Node-RED tutorial, which I'm gonna link it for you. In a nutshell, it checks for the Alexa input and then it passes HTTP request uh, to the Kogi smart block. You can obviously use MQTT if you prefer. Now this post request, it's also being issued or reply from this post request is being issued to my Node-RED and every so often I'm checking what is the status of the uh, smart plug via HTTP request and submit that to my dashboard so I could see a feedback uh, visually on the website. Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, you'll try hacks of your own. Uh, this tutorial has been slightly more difficult than the Ultim uh, plug, so it took me extra time to actually complete it, but hope that won't get you discouraged and will show you how you can actually hack ESP based devices uh, where there is no dev pads exposed like on this smart plug. Now, if you're interested in what am I doing next, uh, just follow me on social media. I usually share some snippets and pictures and you get heads up in there. Uh, also, you know how to use YouTube. Consider subscribing if you're interested. If not, maybe hit, hit that thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Uh, this is a CoGeek smart plug which works with Alexa and Google Assistant. 
And what I like about this... I added Google to your shopping list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Muting Alexa, it's a good, uh, good idea. Uh, it's not good, it's good to me.